All right, so this is going to be the last video in the uh, topic of x-ray. This is x-ray crystallography from the second lecture of the first week. And we're going to talk a little bit about the principles, how x-ray crystallography works, what is x-ray crystallography, what are the live equations, and this is pretty much going to be it. And this is a nice, uh, nice x-ray crystallography resolved image of DNA. And if you don't, if you don't recognize this name, uh, I strongly recommend you go online and look it up because you would need to know a great deal about the DNA. And this is a pretty cool image when we're looking at it. This was resolved using the X-ray crystallography method. So uh, let's take a look at what this method is about. What we have here is a nice depiction of how this works. We have X-ray beams, another an X-ray beam that is directed towards a crystal. And what is a crystal really? It's really important to understand that a crystal is a certain substance that was cooled down to a temperature in which the distance between the atoms and molecules is the same. And what do I mean? Let's just say I have a regular water in a cup. This is a cup. And we have water in it. Cool. So if I zoom in, on these mo water molecules, what I'm going to see is just a random assortment of uh, water molecules just bouncing around one another, moving at random, etc., etc. And I can just keep going with this. And what would happen if I take a look, if I zoom in on an ice cube? Let's just say this is an ice cube. And if I want to zoom in, what I would see in an ice cube is that the assortment of the water molecules is very, very neat, very, very ordered, in a very, very well-structured manner. And obviously, we can keep going with this. What you, what you will see is that the distances between these molecules is the same and the structuring is the same. So mapping this is going to be considerably easier than mapping this mess. And basically, when a substance is cooled enough, it is going to be crystallized. That is what we mean by crystal. Crystallized. I don't know why there. There we go. It is going to be crystallized. So, where is this area? Oh, whatever. So, in any case, if I cool down an element enough to turn it into a crystal, it is going to be easier for me to map it. We're going to talk a little bit about how these x-rays create the information that I need, but basically what happens is I shine the x-ray beam and x-ray photons that are bounced off, and bounce off, this is called diffraction, and it is also called reflection, you should know these terms. This means that if I shine a light here, it just bounces off. This is diffraction or reflection. It's essentially the same. So basically, I shine light here, and it's being bounced off. And up against the screen, just like in the, uh, in the double slit experiment, I can see constructive and destructive interferences. Because light is wave, and it can add up, which will be constructive interferences, bright spots. And destructive interference is basically everything in between. But my information, the information I'm going to analyze, is going to come from these bright spots of constructive interference. And it, it, is also, um, it is also referred to as diffraction fringes. 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 So this is the information I'm getting. And how does this look like? Let's just say I'm going to take a two-dimensional shape. It's just a little bit easier that way. I have, and just so you understand, I'm just going to draw this like so. This is a crystal. And when, when it's frozen, when it's crystallized, the uh, distance difference between each molecule is going to be the same. So let's take the two-dimensional form. And I'm going to shine x-rays on it. These x-rays are going to be bounced off. And I can shine different x-rays that will be bounced off in different angles and will create basically some sort of interference, constructive interference fringes up against my screen. So this is my screen here, 
again in 2D. I may see a bright spot here, bright spot here, maybe one here, one next to it. And these spots would help me resolve the three-dimensional shape of my uh, crystallized object. So it's really important to understand that we do need a crystal. And crystal is basically a material when cooled down enough, creates equal distances between its respective components, respective molecules, and that is going to be easier to map. Okay, moving on. The Lau equations. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so first of all, I'm just going to throw in, throw a bone for you. You don't really need to know how to calculate using these equations. As a matter of fact, they are not in the minimums. What you do need to understand are two things. First thing is the what the hell are these? And the second thing is how the hell do I use these? And these are pretty fair questions, but first of all, what are these equations? And we already mentioned, I'm just going to put a drawing here. Let's just say I have a crystal form here and I have x-rays. Let's depict them in yellow. I have x-rays that are diffracted off and giving me information up against the screen here. And the thing is that I don't really get I don't really get to see these these rays. All I get to see is the interaction fringes up against the screen. What I need to resolve are these angles. This is my information. This is what I need to know. If there was a photon here as well, I need to know these angles to calculate where these respective elements are. And these are basically the equations for each dimension. We're talking about three-dimensional objects, obviously, three-dimensional. And this is just the overall calculation to resolve these. And the problem with these equations, these equations that help us resolve the angles and get the information about the structure of the crystal, is that they are overdetermined. Overdetermined. And this is just a nice way of saying we have too many variables and we can't resolve them with the information we have. So we need to attain more information to resolve them. And this is how. How do we resolve? How do we get more information? And this is actually going to be quite, uh, quite intuitive for you, I assume, to understand that let's say I have this cube here. Now obviously elements are slightly more complicated than this but not in my video. So I have this cube here and I'm lighting it up with x-rays. And I'm going to get different angles. And I'm going to get a specific interference pattern up against the screen here. Let's just say like so. Now I said that if I try to calculate the angles here, I'm, I'm going to have an overdetermined equations or rather overdetermined equations. So what do I do? I can take this same crystal. This is the same crystal. And I can just rotate it around. And as I rotate it around, I keep lighting it with x-ray. And I'm going to get essentially more diffractive interference fringes up against the screen. And being that it's the exact same object, I'm essentially getting more information from the same object on different angles. So this is basically taking the same measurement from different directions. And if I'm taking the same measurement from different directions, I have more information. And if I have more information, I can determine these equations. This is one of two methods, and this is in the minimal. First of all, is it's called rotation. We just rotate the sample. We put it on some sort of pedestal and just rotate it around and keep lighting it up. The other way of doing it, which is essentially almost the same, is taking uh, this substance. Let's say, say I have 200 molecules. It's a sample of 200 molecules. Let's just say that it is in a crystal form and it has 200 molecules of that molecule I want to map. There's 200, let's just say theoretically, obviously it's ridiculous, but there's 200 DNA molecules in here. They're all the exact same, and I want to map them. So instead of turning this around, what I can do is I can chunk this up into little, we can call it um, dust, or you can call it 
Oh, how is it called in the mammals? Let's take a look at the mammals. Um, powdered form. I've already heard of it saying dusted form, but powdered form. Basically what we are doing is we're mashing this up into powder. And now what we're going to have is just powder form. This is the powder form. And I'm now lighting it up with x-ray. And I'm going to also get diffraction fringes here up against the screen. The interesting thing is that consider that this houses a ridiculous amount of molecules inside of it. And all these molecules, being that they're all mashed in powdered form, they're in different orientation in relation to the x-ray. So every x-ray is going to count, encounter one of these molecules in a slight different angle. And I'm going to get a lot of information of different x-ray photons encountering the same exact material here in different angles because it's in powder form. So this is my second way, powder form. This is how I can resolve the Lowry equations. And the only minimal that we really have about this is this minimal, number 93. How can the overdetermination of the Lowry equation be resolved in the case of a three-dimensional crystal? And obviously this is always the case either by rotating the crystal or making it into a part of form, mashing it. Perfect. So again, it's very important that you understand that these equations, you don't really need to know how to calculate with them unless you really, really want to. And uh, what you really need to understand, the basic principles I would recommend understanding, is what are these, what do they represent, and how do we attain information? And again, the what is that these equations, they represent the different angles that are uh, the different reflective angles and diffractive angles from the incident photons. And this gives us information as to the composition of the elements in question or the substance in question. And how we can resolve these overdetermined equations is by either rotating the crystal or by powdering it down and getting a lot of information of X-ray photons sh shown in the same material in different angles because it's in powder form. And that's pretty much it for X-ray crystallography. Hopefully you found this helpful. See you on the next video.